Hello there, Reason users, Pooper here, and welcome to my channel. And today we're going to be taking a MIDI controller. I know I'm using my P1 here, but it can be any MIDI controller which has a toggle buttons. And we're going to be taking them toggle buttons and making them work a bit like momentary buttons so we control things like the start and stop and record and fast forward and rewind on a uh, within reason. So I'm going to be using MIDI aux, which is below, um, to monitor the output of the MIDI, which is coming from my P1. Um, I've got my P1 in its internal mode, and in its internal mode, I think of it as, it, as its dumb mode, but to be honest, even in its internal mode, it's such an advanced um, little controller, and obviously the P4 and the P6 are as well. They're absolutely fantastic, what you can, and how you can configure it. But anyway, what we're coming to talk about today is really is to do with your different buttons. I'm actually going to hit a button now on my oxygen and when I see the output, I'm going to hold the button down and here it is, it's come out, it's come out as, um, we're looking at 18, which is CC24 and it's given me um, 7F, which is 127. I'm going to let go of the button, nothing. That's okay. Let's hit the button again. Oh, it's giving me the same value again. Let go. It's always going to send the same value. Now, obviously, we're in the digital world, so we can get away with that because we can take that and say, hey, I've just received this signal. Who cares if it's the same signal? I can do something. We're in the digital world. Obviously in analog, we'd have to have signals changing so we know something has actually happened. So let's talk about the buttons, what we have on our um, P1. And I've configured them slightly differently. This is the standard kind of button you get on every keyboard. As you can see, I've hit the button, it's come up, it's come up and actually on uh, 38. And so when I sort of let go of it now, you can see it's also pumped up another line, which is saying zero. And the same with this one. So these are called toggle buttons. So you toggle them off, toggle them off. This I've set up as a momentary button. So as soon as I hit it, you can see a values come in. And when I let go, another value goes out. And in fact, it goes from zero. So this is toggling between, or sorry, this is momentary down, one, two, seven, let go zero. This is toggling when the light's on, one, two, seven, when the light's off, it's sent to zero. And these are also set up as momentary. So when I put hit this one, it's actually sent a signal out, but when I let go, it also sends a signal out. And what it is, most controllers would actually end up having your toggle buttons. It makes perfect sense that you want to come along, you want to turn something on, but you don't want to be standing there holding this button down. If you think about it on my little LPK, um, keyboard, if you've been following the series, I've got a sustain button. So obviously that's actually on the little keyboard. I can hold that button down while I'm sustaining. And then obviously as soon as I release it, it's going to release the sustain. Um, so that makes perfect sense when you start using these momentary keys. It's the same really with the transport. It makes perfect sense over here. It's saying, hey, when I hit this button, I'm going to send out 127. And I can t internally inside reason say, hey, I received this button. I received this value. I'm going to hit the start button. Well, what happens if I push it again? Well, no problem. I'm going to say internally, I'm going to hit the start button and reason will go, oh, well, I've already started. I don't care. And the same with the stop button. We want to say stop. But of course, in reason, if we hit stop again, it's going to say, hey, I'm going to move my, my playhead back to where I, where I last started. And then if I hit again, it's going to go right back to the very, very beginning. It obviously depends on what you've got set up and preferences as well. So that's where these come in handy. But most keyboards have this. And really what today's video is about is really taking these and making these work a little bit like a momentary. I say a little bit more like a momentary. What we're going to do, we're going to make these act more like, I'm now going to hit a button, I'm hitting that button on my actual um, oxygen. We're going to make it act more like how the oxygen works itself. Um, and so we can then use these properly for start and stop. And I'll show you what start and stop works or looks like really with these toggle buttons and why these toggle buttons are no good and obviously why we need a momentary. So we'll go through all that kind of setup as well. So I'm going to start off by creating myself a nice brand new MIDI codec file so it's nice and clean and I'm going to do the same with the remote files as well. So I'm going to make sure I've got a nice clean remote file to work from as well so you can see it all actually happening. So I'm going to quickly make a copy of this particular file I happen to have. Obviously I've navigated myself to my MIDI codex directory which obviously would be uh, in the description if you don't know where that is. So the first thing I'm going to actually going to do to this, I'm just going to call this one button. So I've already created a simple little picture for this. There we go, let's call that, so that's great. And before I open that up, let's quickly go into my remotes and I want, I'm gonna make a quick copy of that as well. So I'm gonna open that up. 
and I want to open up my other file. So there it is. Let's get these both open at the same time. Great. So here they are. They're open. So let's give them a new name. So I'm just going to call this button. It's going to be a button test. Um, don't need any of this stuff here for the moment. We'll come back and we'll quickly add that in. And we don't need any of this stuff here for the moment. So we'll come back and add that in as well. And then obviously I just want to move over to my remote file and do the same thing here. Let's clean this out. So this is all nice and clean as well. So it's going to be called button. And I don't need that scope there because that's just an experimental scope. We're going to be using the document stuff, but again, we'll go right from the fresh. So we we'll delete all this stuff out, what was playing around with. And in fact, yeah, I don't need that at all, do I? So I could remove that altogether. So we've got nice and clean. So actually, let's get switched back to the uh, codec file. Here we go. And let's actually start adding some items. Now I'm going to add uh, uh, several items and I'm going to do this two different ways so you can see the result of what's going to happen with the toggle buttons and what's going to happen with momentary and then vice versa when we do it the other way as well. So the first thing we need to do is uh, add ourselves some items in and I'm going to give these um, boring names. I'm going to call it but one because I don't want to call it button one. Why? Because this is going to be called a button to start with and then we're going to have button equals button equals button and it's all buttons everywhere and I just think that's horrible to sort of look at. And by the way, this is the input type button and we've got a minimax. So I'm going to go through these first and then you can see what these look like and I'm going to set up four of them. And the reason I'm setting up four is because obviously we set up buttons one and two, which were um, toggle and three and four were set to momentary. So now what we need to do is map them out and actually find them, um, map out the actual MIDI side of things. So we all know it's going to start with a B. I'm going to use a question mark because I don't care which actual um, MIDI port we're actually um, listening on. Then it was going to be the actual button number, which if I remember right, it was 38. That's going to be assigned to X. And then we're going to assign that to but one. There we go. There's but one. So it's going to be X zero zero. So let's uh, actually cheat a little bit and just do a bit of copy and pasting. And then we've got to swap a few things around. So let's go from button one, two, three, four. And here's going to be 39, 3A and 3B. So that should be all the codex side set up. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to actually map out, um, I'm actually going to map out a combinator uh, and just do some buttons on the combinator. Then you can actually see the results and then we'll actually have a look at how the buttons and how the other method using the box and the variable method, sorry, the value method um, will affect um, things like your, your stop and your play. But you see the results really with the combinator quite nicely because we've got four buttons already set up. So the first thing I'll, I've got to do is set up a scope for the combinator. So it's going to be scope and it's going to be propeller heads. And obviously we're looking at a combinator. And what I need to do is I'm going to map. What am I going to map? I'm going to map but one, so that's my button one. I don't have a key. Where is it going to? It's going to button one. That's the name of it on the combinator. And that's why I didn't want to call this one button one because you're going to be saying button one equals button one, button two equals button two. And I think this way it looks just that little bit less confusing. So buttons one, two, three, four. But one, two, three, four. Let's make sure everything's nice and saved and let's go and restart reason. Restarted reason. So one of the first things I've got to do is obviously set that up as a MIDI controller to start with. So add manual. Manufacturer is going to be Pooh Bear. Model is going to be button, which it already is. And obviously my input type is going to be my P1. It's come up, got a tick, brilliant. And it should be working. All I'm going to quickly do is I'm going to grab my combinator and just put it down here just so I can scroll this down the screen and then I can pull my controller down here. Hopefully everything's going to be working. I'm just going to turn this one off and let's see what actually happens when I hit my first button. So lights come on. I'm going to hit the button again. Nothing. The light's gone off there. Hit the button again and the light's gone off. Hit the button again. Nothing. So these toggle buttons are absolutely useless really. And the same with that one. Okay. Now these were the momentary buttons, which are now on, off, on, off. 
So momentary buttons set up using the button command work well because they turn them into a like a toggle switch, which is what you really do want for this sort of thing. Might not be staying a light actually on my necktie itself, but the fact is they're toggling on here, which is probably the important thing. So let's actually go, let's go and set our, um, it's annoying so I have to keep turning that on and off really to get my, my head around it. So let's actually set up the MIDI codec file slightly differently. And this time we're going to use the values and the values is what we use for general CCs coming in. And that's how we convert them when we're using our knobs and our faders and stuff. So let's actually have a look at that. I'm not touching the uh, remote file at all. I'm going to come into here. And this is the, what the value I'm talking about here. So at the moment, we've said we're turning these into like a button. So I'm actually going to say, no, I don't want button. I would have the word value and the value goes from zero to one, two, seven. Whoops, one, two, seven. And if I just highlight all of that and go click through and go to end, it saves a bit of typing. There we go. All I've got to do is save this. And then I've just got to do is uh, restart Reason. Okay, we've restarted Reason. I'm just going to click that off again. Let's bring down my controller again so you can see it. In fact, oh look, we've got my light on there. So this time when I hit the button, button's come on, I'm going to hit the button again, it's gone off. So in this case, I'm going to hit the button, it's gone off, and that button stayed off. So now when I've hit it, it's gone on. So these buttons are now working as expected. And let's have a look at these buttons. So it's on and immediately goes off. It's on and immediately goes off. So my momentary buttons are acting as momentary. When we set these as buttons inside the codex, it turns them into a toggle button. And obviously the toggle buttons, when you set to try and set up and use the keyword button, it really messes them up because you have to press everything twice um, or even read three times to get anything to actually work. So it's, it's a real mess up. So at least these, I can hit it, it goes on, I hit it, it goes off, hit it, it goes on, hit it, it go off, yeah. Um, and what I can tell you now, before we even without do our next test, because the next test is the important one, is we want to, to get these to work with our start and stop, and we want them to really get them to work with our transport. Now, these momentaries will work perfectly with these transport buttons as they are in the mode they are. They're going to work absolutely fine. But these aren't going to work fine in the mode that they're in because, well, let's set them up and then you'd see what I mean. It's no point in setting these on the buttons because the buttons will make it even worse. So just for the moment, we'll quickly set these up for the start and stop and then I'll show you how we can actually fix it. So we come into our remote file. Rather than delete this out, I'm just gonna comment these out. So double slash just means a comment. They're just gonna be ignored. So anything there. So here we're gonna say map and it's gonna be but one, and we want it to play. Capitalization doesn't actually matter, but um, that's just me. This is gonna be but two, and I want it as a stop. So let's go in, uh, because this is the right remote mapping file, save, all I've got to do is actually just restart my MIDI controller under the service controllers. So let's bring down my controller. And the, the problem is now is these really are out of sync of what's really going on. So if I press this button, which should be to play, I don't know if play is gonna work or not. And play has happened to work this time. Let's hit the stop key. Let's see what happens here. Stop has worked. Okay, I'm gonna push play, nothing. Push play again. Yes, it's working. Let's push stop, nothing. Yeah, so you have to turn these on and off for them to sort of work. It's a real pain, obviously, having to double tap it. And as I say, as a momentary, these would work absolutely fine, guarantee it. So what I'm gonna do now is show you how we can actually fix it so that will actually work with toggle buttons with buttons like this. We're gonna be making this change in the MIDI coder itself. And we're gonna leave everything how it's actually configured at the top for the moment. And we're gonna change it down here. So at the moment, as I say, we're pressing that button and it is getting the value in and then we're having to press it again, but it's not actually doing anything. And then we have, you know what I mean? So it's all these double presses to try and get something to happen and it's not. So I'm gonna cheat. And I say, I'm gonna cheat. What we're gonna do, and can I actually zoom in here? Let's see if I can zoom in. 
there we go. When I've got this X, I'm actually going to hard code it and I'm going to say, no, you're going to equal 127. So no matter what happens with this button now, this is what you've got to bear in mind of what else you might be um, mapping out, but no matter what, with this button, it doesn't matter if it's sending out a zero or a one, I am going to pass into the system 127. So I don't care what's happening this side, I'm actually going to say over this side, it's always going to be the 127. So let's actually restart Reason and see what happens. Okay, I've restarted Reason, let's quickly bring my controller down. So now this should start it, let's have a look, there it is a start. Let's do a stop, stop is stopped instantly, let's hit start again. Start is hit started instantly, doesn't matter if I hit that multiple times. Let's hit stop, that's fine. And so let's hit stop again. So it hasn't gone all the way back to the beginning, that's cool. And I hit stop once more, then it's reset right back to the beginning. So now the start and the stop buttons, even though the lights don't look correct actually at the top, at least um, they're working whenever you actually hit the start, it's always going to start. And when you hit the stop, it's always going to hit the stop. And that is the key part behind what we were actually doing at this particular stage. This final screenshot, which I'm going to leave you with, is does exactly the same thing what we've just seen. So here is our 0 to 127, which you saw, and then we actually made it 127 here, actually, under the pattern. We could, at this stage, make this 127 or this 127 and leave it as XX. So this is the scaling. So we've actually scaled it down to equal from 127 to 127. So zero will equal 127. That's how we've scaled it. This also works with the buttons. So from zero to one, we can actually force it to equal one no matter what. And obviously here we've got one to one, so we can go back to our X and X. So you can do it using the buttons if we start messing things around. However, what I strongly recommend is when you're using a toggle button, stick with the word value. Why? Because if I came along and I, and I set this up here like this, and then I came along and set it up this particular way, I might say a year down the line or whatever, <laughs> hey, I'm coming back into this, I'm looking at it, and A, I might say, actually, I don't want this button doing the start and stop now. I now want it to go off and actually do other things. I can just change this to an X and an X, and I know it's going to work. If I use the word button, as you saw earlier, the button screwed up tool buttons. You will end up doing double, double, and triple, and quadruple pushes to try and get things to work. It just really messes them up. So stay away from them on toggle buttons, but obviously use buttons if you've got a momentary button that you wish to turn into a toggle button. Oh, it gets very confusing, doesn't it? But I'm pretty sure you've managed to follow that. <laughs> and all I'm going to say is thank you so much for watching and um, bye for now.